Welcome to People and Profit. I'm Kate Moody. Coming up, they may rule the online universe, but how are influencers being regulated in the real world? And what's next for their business models? Social media platforms come and go. Who are the market leaders and the up and comers? And a cutting edge app with some old school tips. We explore TikTok's latest money saving trend, putting cash in an envelope. It's one of the most visible, yet perhaps least understood industries in the world. Social media influencing is not just a side hustle or a road to celebrity, but an increasingly lucrative career path and a crucial part of businesses' marketing strategies. Tens of millions of people around the world consider themselves to be influencers. That means having significant following on social media platforms and receiving payment for producing content that promotes certain products or services. The market has more than doubled in size in the past four years, worth an estimated $16.4 billion in 2022. It's forecast to jump by a further 30% this year. The rapid growth of the industry, though, means that regulators have struggled to keep up. I'm joined now by Canton Bordage, founder and CEO of Colesquare, which is an influencer marketing platform here in France. Thank you for being with us today. First of all, explain to us how do influencers make money? Basically, they are paid to produce content, post with uh, text, photos and videos on their different social media. Uh, so they are basically content creators. That's also why we call them content creators. Um, and that's how they make money. But they not only make money, most of the time they also receive products. Uh, that you can value as money, but uh, they, they receive product. Uh, and lots of times they do things for free, uh, they are not paid. Um, paying influencers is becoming more and more important. It's now like 40 to 45% of brands that are paying influencers, uh, but it's starting to, to be big. It was not the case uh, before. This is an industry that's really emerged over the last decade or so. As you say, brands are paying more and more attention to it, more money into it. Are social media influencers now more powerful than traditional advertising? You're right by saying it's a media. Uh, so now we compare, for example, influencer marketing to uh, TV advertising uh, because it has become uh, a media on its own. And it's a more powerful media than ever because it's very, it's, it's very fragmented, but it's very uh, targeted. So you can have uh, a huge performance, more um, more performance than on the traditional TV show, for example. And that's why it has become uh, very powerful. Um, and it has also become very uh, powerful because of, um, of the, the, the e-commerce uh, transition on social media. More and more people are buying product online and there are more and more buying product on social media. And influencers are really a good way to attract new clients for brands. Because this is a sector that's grown so rapidly, oversight has been sort of slow to catch up. Regulators have been struggling to do, get there. How do you see, the, what, what kind of need do you see for regulation in terms of supporting and allowing the industry to flourish while also protecting consumers? Yeah, that's a, that's a point because we have been talking a lot about that in different countries. Some countries started to, to regulate that. Uh, they passed some laws, uh, good or bad. Uh, the point is that um, there are lots of laws that are already applicable to influencer marketing, but that, that are not well known today. So the first thing is to clarify the laws and clarify what is applicable or not. Uh, that's what we started in France, for example, recently with the government. Um, and uh, for example, maybe uh, forbid uh, the use of influencer marketing for certain sectors like surgery that might be uh, complicated or uh, like cosmetic surgery sort of exactly thing. Mm -hmm. cosmetic surgery or uh, be more careful uh, for campaigns that are targeting uh, the youngest people uh, that are also uh, heavy users of social media and that can be targeted by alcohol companies or uh, tobacco companies or whatever and some of those those regulations, those protections are specifically <clears throat> important because, as you say, there are so many young people who are exposed to social media, who are exposed to influencers. Are we also seeing an increase in the number of young people who want to do this as a full-time job? Yes, exactly. Um, a recent study uh, stated that uh, it was conducted in the US, in the UK and in China. They asked uh, young people what they wanted to do when they grew older. And... Uh, in the UK and the US, they say they, they wanted to become YouTubers, 
where in China they still want to become astronauts, for example. That used to be the case in the other countries. So really there is a, a, a society phenomenon, and, um, and so we have to take that into account. Is this something that could become an area of study, do you think? A degree in influencing or in social media? Yeah, it's already the case. Uh, there are some schools that started, not really in classical uh, education path, uh, but yet it started. And uh, most of all, uh, there are also, there are also lots of uh, associations that are uh, trying to sensibilize uh, the youngest people um, about the limits of social media and especially influencer marketing. Uh, we are seeking about, um, for example, harassment or bullying, uh, fake news, um, and, and so on. What are the most relevant platforms at the moment when it comes to social media influencing? It depends on what you want to do, what is your target, uh, and what the format you want to do. If you want to do a long video format, YouTube might be better than TikTok, that are short video format. Um, so it really depends on your strategy and your target. But uh, what we see today in terms of figures is that 65% uh, of uh, brands today that are doing influencer marketing are going to TikTok more than uh, Instagram, for example, where it's only 50%. So TikTok is overpassing now Instagram, not in terms of budget, but they are doing more operation on TikTok. So there is a huge trend around TikTok. A uh, lot of people are on TikTok and a lot of brands are going there to target them. And there is a war on video formats on all platforms. Today you have YouTube Shorts, you have TikTok, you have Reels on Instagram. So all the co platforms are converging to the same short video formats. What kind of other emerging trends do you see for influencers? How, for example, might artificial intelligence impact this industry? It's already impacting a lot this industry, um, digital advertising at all. Um, AI is very interesting in terms of uh, levers to increase revenues, for example, or reduce costs in all the, the process. Uh, for influencer marketing, today you can use AI to find better influencers that better suit with your target, uh, analyzing, for example, the content that uh, are engaging the most with your audience. Uh, you can use uh, AI to produce content uh, with influencers for your brand. Uh, you can use AI to better measure and target uh, buyers' personas. So there are lots of things you can do with AI, and it's already happening because most of the content you are looking at on social media is impacted by AI. And that raises then still more challenges for regulators. Exactly. Quentin Bordage, thank you so much for being with us on France. Thank you, today. Kate. Well, from AOL Instant Messenger and MySpace to the ubiquitous apps of today, social media has transformed the way we communicate and connect over the past two decades. Platforms are increasingly used in political and business spheres, as well as in social circles. And more than half of the 8 billion people in the world now use social media of some kind. That's turned many social media companies into money-making machines with a focus on targeted advertising. Yuka Royers here with more. Yuka, what are the biggest social media platforms at the moment? Well, Kate, around 4.9 billion people worldwide use social media with the average person on seven different platforms per month. Now, Facebook takes the biggest slice with just under 3 billion active monthly users, followed by YouTube, Instagram and WhatsApp. Three of them are owned by Meta. TikTok is hot on their heels and some apps are enormously successful in limited markets like WeChat, whose 1.3 billion active users are mostly Chinese. Line is popular in Japan, Taiwan, Thailand and Indonesia. So this is a rapidly evolving market. What apps are younger users gravitating towards? Well, TikTok is the fastest growing social network. Uh, the app has been downloaded three and a half billion times worldwide. Unlike WeChat, which basically stayed in the Chinese market, TikTok managed to expand abroad, where it's been facing something of a crackdown because of security concerns. Many teenagers are using TikTok and YouTube for entertainment today and Instagram or Snapchat to connect with others. Apps like Be Real, Gas and Discord are also trending among the Gen Z, while Facebook and Twitter appear to have taken a back seat. A study last year showed only a third of US teenagers used Facebook at all, down from 71% just seven years ago. So what kind of changes or challenges could be in store for social media going ahead? 
Well, the demographic changes and the rise of newcomers have posed the challenge to the established giants. Facebook's ad revenue has stalled, with Meta blaming weak advertising demand and stiff competition. Twitter has lost a lot of advertisers in the wake of its takeover by Elon Musk. All are facing the spectre of tighter regulations. There's also growing concern over the effect of social media on mental health, particularly for younger generations. TikTok has come under fire over dangerous challenges that went viral. And scientists have warned of a possible link to the growing rate of suicide among young people, Kate. Yukaroa, thanks so much for that update. Next, it's a decidedly old-fashioned way of saving money, putting cash aside in an envelope. But that's become the rage on TikTok as users build and document their growing nest eggs. Catherine Kadir Clifford has more. I like to count and kind of flip through the money. One Thumbing through cold, hard cash. It's a new trend embracing an old technique. Some TikTok users are managing their money as a tactile experience rather than a digital one. You sure you want these? No, 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 no. Come on, come on. Come on. All right, whatever you say. Hard earned bills are counted one by one and divided into envelopes for specific expenses. Cash stuffing influencer Judia Griner says the method helped her to bring her spending under control. I was just kind of blindly spending money, and my financial um, plan of attack was just pray that everything would be okay. Um, but ever since I started cash stuffing, like, it's kind of like a pipeline into financial literacy. So now I have a budget and I don't have anxiety over money anymore. Judia's TikTok account has more than 200,000 followers, while the hashtag cash stuffing has almost 960 million views on the platform. Let's say 5, Attracting followers, campaigns like the 100 Envelope Challenge, which claims to help you save $5,000 in 100 days. There are some downsides. Experts warn keeping money at home means it earns no interest, while some businesses only accept digital transactions. But there's no broader movement back to cash in the US where the TikTok trend began. According to a recent study, in 2022, about 41% of Americans said they don't make any cash purchases in a typical week, compared to only 24% back in 2015. That's all for now. Don't forget you can find this and our previous shows on the France 24 website or as a podcast wherever you usually listen. You can also get in touch with your comments and questions where else but on social media. Until next time, thanks for watching.